Um, thank you very much, Rajan. Appreciate the uh, the introduction there. Um, and I, you know, it is a fascinating topic, and it's something which I think we could really have a whole conference about. This whole idea of, of differentiating Saudi tourism product from global competition, because there are just so many issues layered into that. Um, but anyway, we, we, I'm fortunate to have two, two panelists who are going to answer all of, my, all of the questions and give us everything we need to know about this. We have Lucio Frigo, who is the executive advisor and chief development officer at the Saudi Ministry of Culture. And then we have Hisham Hasumi, who is the strategy and business development chief officer at the Boutique Group. So again, both, both coming with, from organizations which will bring a really great perspective on this process. So, how do, we, how do we start this conversation? This conversation is, is based upon the fact that we have, Saudi has this wonderful history, this wonderful storied past that, that, that uh, is, should be really celebrated through the, the product that we're producing. And then we have the challenge with that of a country, and a kingdom, which is looking very much to the future and being very futuristic and being seen as, as as pushing the boundaries in terms of technology and, and uh, um, it sort of innovation. So, so how do we blend these two things together? We've got the, we know that the, the tourists, the, the visitors, the discerning traveler is really looking for authentic experiences. And, and those authentic experiences are kind of, uh, they, they like to curate them as part of a collection. And it's something which, which relates very much to well, what is authenticity, I guess? And that's something which we'll, we'll discuss through the process. So I'm actually going to have a bit of fun through this to start things off, just to get a bit, a bit of the energy going. And um, we're actually bringing out a, an avatar of, of uh, Will Onions, who's, who's one of our founders. So he, he, he deals, he heads up our AI division, let's say. Um, Will, it actually looks remarkably good for about 150, 115, I think he is. Um, and I hope I can look that good at, at, uh, at that age. Um, and also, he's, he's maintained a very um, interesting, innovative approach to life. So, again, we're going to be bringing him on to... to Thank you, Tim, oh, okay. for including me in your panel at the Future Hospitality Summit in Saudi. And it's an honor to meet Hisham and Lucio virtually. So, he's, he, Will is our, our sort of... I am of very excited to have the opportunity of assisting the panel with a bit of an introduction to some of the topics. Okay, he's got, obviously got a lot to say, but he's, he's going to be our guest panelist to, for, to, for, to start the ball rolling. So what, we, what we've, we, with OBMI, have been uh, playing around with AI and, and, and kind of different aspects of AI. And so we've actually got Will to come and kind of give us some linkages between kind of the traditional architecture and looking to the future. These are all fairly random AI um, exercises, we just pulled some out of, of the many thousands that we've been playing with through this process. So if the first question was, okay, just give us, you know, AI, give, give us a, a resort, potentially a resort of, you know, five, five years in the future, something which, which is fairly nudged. And then we said, okay, let's then progress that and then take this, the idea into probably a bit more of an urban context. Um, so then AI came up with this, and I thought it was quite interesting. Let's then try and take it into something which is a little bit more um, contemporary, a little bit more futuristic, looking maybe 10 years out into the future. So AI came up with something like this. And we said, OK, that's, that's kind of OK, fun. Let's now look at it and say, um, stretching the principles of Nudge with a more parametric approach. And so, it, again, it's fascinating just playing around with AI, how the ideas evolve as, as you go down this kind of rabbit hole. So we said, okay, uh, let's then say, take a look inside one of the courtyards in, in this, with you know, taking this sort of somewhat parametric approach. Um, and this is what AI came up with. Um, and then I said, okay, let's maybe go and take it a little bit more organic and a little bit more futuristic. And all of this is just working to say, okay, how do we evolve um, a style into something which balances this whole idea of being futuristic? Then let's move down over to Jeddah, maybe to Al Balad, and, and look at something which is a little bit more Hijazi. Um, so again, this is a, a, 
an AI interpretation of that. We're playing around with the Roshans a little bit, a little bit of the, the traditional colors of, of Al Balad. So let's then push the Roshans to be a little bit more of a feature because it's uh, you know, something which, you know, when we're working with, with Hijazi, we see the Roshans, which, which this one worked fairly well. But, but I think we need to be, to be a little bit more kind of geometric, geometric with our Roshans. So how is that going to evolve? Um, so again, it's just, it's just fun. It's just fun saying, you know, okay, let's, let's kind of explore ideas. Um, that, uh, then looking at, you know, again, thinking of our ballad, let's explore the rooftops, let's play around with the rooftop terraces, add a bit of landscape. So it, all of these just are ideas and prompts that we give through the process. But then we said, okay, take, step it back a bit. Let's try and calm things down. Um, which, and uh, Will came up with this solution, which, you know, is quite pleasant, some different scale of things, and then step it back a little bit more and, and start to kind of really relax and actually play around with a bit of projection. Um, so uh, AI came up with this, which again is a fun solution. Then we said, okay, let's go down into Asir and take a look at, at ba uh, Baha and, and uh, Abha and, and look at a potential resort down in that area using some of the Asir traditions. So again, this is what it came up with, which is it's an interesting reinterpretation of some of the uh, Asir typologies. And then, okay, let's, let's try and take that a little bit more dramatic. Um, this perhaps went a little bit too far. <laughs> um, so, okay, then we said, okay, let's try and do something different and put a bit of electronic dance. And you can actually play around with these kind of crazy ideas and, and we end up with something which um, is a little bit more extreme. So then we said, let's, let's go, okay, uh, back out to the empty quarter um, and, and think about, okay, how can we reinvent uh, in, in using AI some of the, the concept of the Bedouin tent? And then, then we said to Will, okay, let's go back in time to about the 13th century and have a discussion with Leon Fibonacci about the Fibonacci sequence and, and how we can, we can uh, bring the sequence into the design of one of these tents. And again, this is what uh, AI came up with in terms of some of the solutions. So it's a fun process. And, and it's, it's interesting, you know, as part of the dialogue that we're going to have in terms of thinking about um, being able to relate traditions to, to some of the, the futuristic ideas. As I say, these are some of the more practical kind of solutions that we've been, well, I don't know about practical, but solutions we've been coming up with AI. So, Will, thank you very thank much. Thank you, Tim. It was so fun to get out again. I can't wait for our next design adventures. Okay, thank you very much, Will. Really appreciate it. So, back to the topic. Uh, and I'm gonna sit down and join you now while Please. we go through this one. Um, actually, interestingly, have, are you guys playing around with AI at all in, in uh, Lucio in terms of the ministry? Well, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Obviously, we are not enough, now that I see <laughs> that. Is Will up for hiring? Can we actually work with him? We, yeah, Will, we can, we can organize Will for you, yeah. But uh, joke support. I think uh, just for the sake of uh, also explaining why the Ministry of Cultures are presented here, there is a unit within the Ministry which is called the Center for Development Project, where we act as master developer of different sites that are underpinned by heritage and culture, so they could be urban sites like Jed al Balad, but it can also be sites like Jack's in Riyadh or other cultural landscape like uh, the area around Al Fao in the south of the country, many others. So I think we don't do directly, but mm -hmm. we definitely are increasingly being exposed to that indirectly because uh, many of the designers that we are working with starting to actually explore it, and then we see other faces of the AI as algorithms that are being implemented by uh, you know, our units that looks after customer survey and so on. So definitely you give us some food for thought. <laughs> Hisham, what about, what about boutique? We don't have anything as engaging as what you have shown just yet, but, uh, but we agree with you that AI and technology in general should be uh, here to enable us to do what we do better. So um, we believe that the human intelligence, human empathy, and uh, anticipation of needs is at the heart of what we do as a, an ultra luxury hotel. But there are areas where technology in general, AI, data science, and everything with it is essential. Uh, if you think ultra luxury, for example, it comes with hyper personalization. 
it's impossible to achieve that, this hyper personalization without strong data science uh, back technology, AI and so on. Um, there's also all the back of the house and the behind the scene where technology is essential to help us make the right decisions, uh, whether to optimize our revenue, to manage our cost and so on and so forth. So uh, human at the center, but technology is needed to elevate the experience and uh, run the most efficient business. Whether we like it or not, it's going to be part of the way we do business in the future. Taking a, a deeper dive into to today's topic, um, I think it's, it's useful to kind of review one of the defined objectives of the Vision 2030, mm -hmm. transforming our unique assets into distinctive tourism, ex tourist experiences that attract both domestic and international visitors, a key objective of Vision 2030. Our goal is to create a tourism sector that is not only a source of national pride, but also a significant contributor to our economy. Lucio, uh, share how the, the Ministry of Culture is fostering hospitality experiences that are both the, the kind of source of pride and economic drivers. So, and, you know, bearing in mind the topic of the, today's conversation. Yeah. Well, uh, within our asset, there are a lot of uh, assets that are being converted uh, to an hospitality use. So perhaps also to give a more context, a lot of what we do uh, and worked on is a brownfield asset. So our heritage asset or cultural asset are converted to hospitality. So I think what is always very key and important for us is to make sure that the story of the, the property, but also the story of the previous inhabitants, so the two sides of culture, which is tangible and intangible are part of um, the, the proposition that will be put forward from uh, any operator. And some of the things, we are working with some of you actually, and uh, some of the uh, things that we're bringing forward are actually the creation of very specific properties with a very key name that is connected to the specific history, but is underpinned by uh, a specific uh, operator, right, to, to create consistency. So for example, in, in Al Balad, in the uh, Jeddah Historic District, we are working with, at the moment, Curtain Hospitality on a few properties that have been converted into a unique boutique hotel experience. And I really encourage all of you to come and visit them. Uh, Hisham, the, the, your team has, has developed sort of expertise in preserving cultural heritage for ultra-luxury hospitality. Can you give us some specific examples of, of, of how you relate to, to the topic in terms of the, you know, the, 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 the unique assets that, that share the goals and the visions of, of, of uh, Vision 2030? Absolutely. It, it all starts with the, with the vision. So the vision is very uh, broad and, and, and bold. Um, the, the target is to reach 100 million tourists by 2030, 10% uh, GDP produced by tourism and hospitality, 1.6 million job creation. So it's, it's a very ambitious goal. Uh, it requires involvement of different stakeholders, private stakeholders, public stakeholders, governmental stakeholders. So Boutique is very excited to be part of this uh, ecosystem as a PIF-owned company, but also in close collaboration with Ministry of Culture, Ministry of Tourism, the T Tourism Authority. And what we do really is that we are enriching that landscape by adding a, a niche product that will uh, create interest. And what we bring is ultra-luxury heritage uh, hospitality that is new. So uh, by doing that, uh, we contribute to uh, creating a, a thriving economy uh, as one of the main pillars. But it goes beyond only the economics. It's also because of our close ties with the Ministry of Culture, uh, we, our mandate is to celebrate and promote culture and heritage globally, but also inside Saudi Arabia. So it's, it's about setting new benchmark globally to Saudi hospitality, but also allowing Saudi nationals to rediscover their own heritage. And Lovely. this is related to creating a vibrant society, which is also one of the main pillars of Vision 2030. And it kind of ties into this issue of, of, of authenticity, and I think, you know, which is, which is something which is so important. And, and when you're talking about kind of leveraging the heritage, that it's how you do it in a very authentic way. And I think it's interesting for this discussion is how do we define authenticity? Because especially when you're looking at, at you know, very different approaches to some of the design solutions sometimes, you know, often we're, as, as, as architects, we're looking at kind of sort of context and culture, and then how do you interpret that into, a, into a, a maybe a fu future-focused future approach? 
So, Lucia, how does, how does the ministry define authenticity? What, and, and give us some examples of, of how you, you define it. It's a very good question. Uh, well, first of all, the ministry is responsible for the UNESCO file within the, the kingdom. Therefore, as uh, we know, the authenticity is one of the key three pillars as defined by the UNESCO for the protection of different assets. So it's a very important um, concept for everything that we do. Now, I, if, if you allow me to take a bit of a step back and give it again the context or the philosophical context is we really believe that tradition is a source of a continuous innovation. And this builds into, I think, the key uh, direction that is given to us by the leadership of the country, which is, if I have to summarize in a very simple way, would be we will be relevant in the future because of our past. So in everything that we do, in all the projects that we do, we try to really understand the principles that led to a specific uh, way of life in an old city or in a, on, uh, you know, in different, more desertic environment, etc. And also look at how this arrived to uh, create a very specific kind of architecture and therefore feel how those principles can be brought forward to the present and to the future to remain uh, very relevant. So we are definitely not into anything that has to do with the romantic approach, something stuck in time that needs to be reproduced, but actually we try to see what is the next phase of this tradition to remain very close to the Saudi roots. And I really believe also to build on what uh, Isham was saying that uh, this country, first of all, has a and I think, I don't have to repeat in this forum, an extraordinary culture, very multiple different dimensions, both tangible and intangible. And therefore, in our endeavor, the real key is to try to bring this forward. And authenticity, as long as we are not trying to recreate something, there is nothing to, I, sometimes I also talk to, talking our designer, there is nothing really to be extraordinarily creative about. What is really important is to study why a certain conformation of an urban fabric or a specific way of building came about and trying to see where that will be brought forward. So for example, many materials could be improved and many ways, uh, you know, life has changed. So we need to make sure that this property can be converted. But I think it's really a question of creating this continuity and that's how we can remain authentic. And I think that's interesting. I think it's, it's really getting to understand the why that sort of starts the whole process off, and then you can reinterpret the why into kind of how. Uh, what yeah. about, um, Hisham, in terms of the boutique group, how, how, do, how would you say you define authenticity? Because you're working with a, a variety of different mm -hmm. palace products that uh, are, dif are authentic in so, di so many different ways. And it starts, as, as you said, with, with the why. The, um, all the studies are, are showing that what the modern day traveler is asking for today is meaningful experience, genuine connections. And the best place to start with is authenticity. Uh, that's the best foundation you can have to engage with the, uh, with the traveler or the guest. Uh, what does that mean for boutique? Uh, authenticity doesn't mean traditional. For us, uh, authenticity means being loyal to the places, to the buildings that we uh, operate and, and own, being loyal to history, being loyal to small stories also that are within this history but it's also being loyal to the locality we are in. So um, it's, of course, we have to uh, elevate it, to sublime it, but uh, this is our interpretation of authenticity uh, that we want to bring to our customer through preserving, promoting, and elevating a, a heritage and, and sharing it as it is, with its complexities, with its contrast, with everything as it is. And, and that's what would create that element of surprise and genuine connection. And I think it's not only a matter of um, authenticity for the sake of authenticity as well. We have also evidence that in mature destinations, the historical factor or the authentic factor commands a higher premium as well. If you look at uh, well-established destinations like uh, Paris, Rome, Istanbul, the heritage uh, buildings will always command apple for apple a premium over modern buildings because of the character they create and the genuine connection they, they create. So, so for us, it's a no-brainer. So that's interesting. So, okay, so having sort of defined authenticity, then how, do we, how can we translate this into a truly Saudi experience for the visitors? So uh, really, what is, what is the Saudi essence if you're going to bottle that and, 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 uh, and 
put that into your project and you know, define it so that then you can, can reuse it in projects, even although they may be um, significantly futuristic, but what is that Saudi essence that you need to wrap into that? So, Isham, you start that one off. Yeah, sure. Uh, the, um, I mean, when, when we mention Saudi experience, Saudi is blessed with uh, a large territory and, and a great variety of landscape and, and experience. Today and even, even more tomorrow, Saudi will be offering a, a catalog of experiences, not one experience. So it can, can be from sea and sun to extreme sports and uh, adventure to uh, a religious uh, trip. So there are a lot of uh, experiences, but if we could look at what really the common factor between all of these, you would find probably warm hospitality as one factor regardless of the destination. Uh, so it is a genuine, uh, it's, it's in the Saudi DNA. The second aspect that you would find uh, uh, across the board is uh, an element of dynamism, of movement. Uh, Saudi is extremely dynamic. You may visit Paris in 2014 or 18, it would be probably, be probably, probably much the same. Riyadh in 2014 and 2022 is a very different story. Yeah. So uh, there is that element of, of witnessing a transformation that is extremely appealing, regardless of the experience that you are proposing. So I think these are some of the, uh, some of the ingredients that, that, that you do. There's also an element of surprise and wonder. Most people that visited Saudi will, will tell you, I did not expect that. I did not know that. Uh, I corrected a misconception. So I would say these are the common uh, aspects, but, uh, but it's, it's experiences, not only one experience, for sure. Uh, Lucio, what, what do you think? Again, bottle, bottling that Saudi, ex Saudi essence, what, what is the, in that bottle? Well, I would say that uh, this is one of the most hospitable countries in the world. The, hospi the Saudi yeah. hospital is incredible. And this is not even me saying this. This is our customers that come in many of the hotels that we have in the various projects. That's, so already leveraging that and this sense of feeling someone that could have been your friend forever, it's incredible. But to be a bit more specific, I think it's really connecting to the understanding the specificity of the location, of the city, of the landscape, as Isham was saying before, uh, a project in Jeddah al Balad that we have is very different from the project that we are currently doing in a hotel in a, on the other side of the sea, in uh, Alogair, on the, on the Gulf. So it's uh, really understanding what is that makes that area specific. I think there is more and more even a, a top-down approach that is starting to understand, the, the differentiating from an architectural perspective guidelines for each region that needs really to build on the local uh, patterns and the local materials, but then also the same thing will go into um, the, the intangible, so the people. If you want some uh, specific example, one of the things that I would give as an advice to a lot of the operators here would really try to leverage among the workforce for the hotel, specifically on the front facing staff, the Saudi uh, talent, because this is something that we have seen in projects that we have developed in Alola or in Jeddah, etc., is what always remain and is always mentioned by international customers saying it was amazing to get to know such a wonderful people and really they, they have a huge capacity of, I think, for this industry. But then finally being able to, uh, which is always quite difficult, being able to adopt and, for example, an international brand that comes to Saudi often, my recommendation would be to adopt and to adapt that brand to the Saudi customs without entering into the big diatribe of the cultural appropriation, which is something that we can discuss on the side. But we have seen this being extraordinarily successful in projects. Uh, many of you have visited, I don't know, Habitas in Alula, but you will have to come to visit the new Al Balad collection in, uh, in Jeddah and see how that is actually implemented. Okay, now this, this is the kind of crunch question, a bit down to kind of crunch time, I guess, getting towards. So having defined the essence, how do you translate it into the more futuristic design of the likes of the line or Trojina or something that, I mean, we saw up, up on the screen earlier on, I don't know if you were in earlier on, just to see the, the Neom video. How do you translate that Saudi essence into something which is very futuristic in terms of design? Um, and, uh, do, do, so, sorry. Go ahead. No, it is. The, the way we approach it, of course, uh, design is an important element. So our approach is to have a, a, a very meticulous uh, preservation. So 
uh, for now we have the, the three palaces that are announced. Uh, so Al-Hamra Palace, uh, the Red, in Jeddah, Red Palace, in Riyadh, and Wake Palace. So uh, each one of them uh, belong to a different era. So from the late 50s to, uh, to the mid 80s. So it starts with a meticulous uh, transformation. But um, for us, it's beyond the, uh, the design. It's everything that is happening uh, throughout the guest journey. So uh, we are a, an, only, an owner and developer and operator, but we have a very strong uh, culture and heritage uh, initiative that is being run throughout the process. So everything is documented uh, from a preservation point of view, but also in terms of service. So we managed to uh, infuse a cultural touch point throughout the journey. So uh, it's, it's throughout. It's not necessarily mm -hmm. the building, and, uh, but, but it's also the way we behave from the greeting to the uh, FNB to small objects and, and, and all of that. Okay. Lucia, what, what, would you, what would your response, what would the Ministry of Culture's response in terms of translating the, the essence into one of these more futuristic projects? Well, I think even the line, I see a strong continuity with the actual and historical uh, there, is, there is a strong continuity between historical sites and something like the line. Insofar, one of the key uh, assumptions and one of the key reasons why the line has a, this specific approach to development and construction is to basically minimize the carbon footprint and to minimize and to create something that is more sustainable while leaving the, re the rest of the landscape intact. Therefore, this is very akin to what we are working on many projects, which is called a cultural landscape, where we're trying to build upon uh, the way that humans and nature has co-evolved over the century in a way that doesn't destroy it either or. And I think the line, you know, if I have to look at the principle behind it, is very much approach. If we go more closer to our project, I really, that's why I was insisting on the idea of continuity. I don't yeah. think there is the past and the future. There is a continuity of what is relevant to bring forward from the past into our future. And I think this country is doing this extraordinarily well at the moment. Therefore, even in projects that have supposedly into a very old urban fabric, the idea would be to use new materials and see how they are more sustainable. I'll give you a very simple example to say what that means. It's going to have to be simple because we're... It's in, uh, in Jeddah, we use coral, lime, the coral limestone in the past, which is something that is protected and it's not available in the future. So what is the new way to do that? Or in Alula, the same for the mat. It can be used to stabilize bricks and so on. So I think there is a strong sense of continuity and the same, we don't have the time, could be said for the intangible part, for the people and the hospitality part of that. As I say, I, unfortunately we have run out of time, and, and, but it is a topic that, that we could spend uh, the whole afternoon discussing because I think there are so many related issues in terms of, of the, the, the topic itself. But uh, and I, I think going back to what you were saying, it's really, un a lot of it is understanding why why things have happened in the past and being able to reinterpret that into the future. And that's, that's a big part of it, but yeah, anyway. Uh, hum really appreciate your input and your responses, and obviously very happy to continue the, uh, the conversation over a cup of coffee with, with um, anyone. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you.